Welcome back to Larry TV News. This week we show you ways you can vote on campus and keep you in the loop for the upcoming election. I'm Irma Peña. And I'm Marissa Moniz. We have great stories for you this week, but first we show you how one Baylor alumni is helping Hurricane Helene relief. Thousands of families have been affected by Hurricane Helene recently, and one Baylor alum has been helping out in a unique way. LTVN's Gracie Savage has the story. Hurricane Helene has caused damage and devastation to many communities on the East Coast. And one Baylor Bear is doing what he can to help out those people in need. So fasten your seatbelts and let's take a look at his plane of action. Literally just saw a Facebook post and just showed up. And just like a lot of several other hundred pilots, we just all started flying out and, and going. When Stephen Follis's home state of North Carolina was hit by Hurricane Helene, he told his wife he wanted to help out any way he can. He looked on Facebook and found the Operation Airdrop page. Operation Airdrop is a program based out of Texas that sends out relief flights to areas damaged by a hurricane. They were calling all pilots, so Stephen flew over to help. Well, they just walked in and said, hi, I've got a plane. And they said, how much weight can you carry? And I said, told them 300 pounds. He said, okay, go to Gatlinburg. I thought, okay, well, that was easy. Follis said this operation is a fantastic one, with hundreds of volunteers helping on site. Most of the supplies came from the local Walmart or donation centers. And with the help of selfless volunteers, Follis and other pilots loaded their airplanes and delivered the supplies to people in need. Well, over 1.1 million pounds of supplies were moved either by airplanes or also they also had some trucks that were going on the ground, but uh, just taking everything up that we could. Follis has been to five different places impacted by the hurricane, delivering supplies to the victims, but he is not the only one. Just encourage folks to volunteer, uh, to send, to send you know, money, resources, uh, help out any way they can. Because I think it's, um, it was some of the darkest of days, but just seeing the community support has been pretty awesome. Follis said he met people from all over the country, but one in particular stood out. Or a shirt with a little BU on it. And I'm standing in the hangar in Concord about like loading up about to leave. And uh, this girl walks by and goes, hey, is that Baylor? I was like, yeah, it's Baylor. She goes, I went to Baylor. I'm like, hey. So I found another Baylor bear standing in this hangar. In difficult times like these, people might think there's nothing they can do to help. But Stephen Follis is proof that you can make a difference, even if you're halfway across the country. For Larry at TV News, I'm Gracie Savage. Student government hosted a Bears vote drive that continued around campus this Monday. Student government partnered with Baylor ambassadors to help register hundreds of students for the upcoming election, and for many students, this is their first time voting. Volunteers set up at Moody Fountain Mall and The Herd to register new voters, change county registrations, and answer any questions. If you're registered, here's how you can use your voice. Look out November 5th, we are going to have a poll from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. here at the Herd. So if you registered in McLennan County with the McLennan County address, you can use that site at the Herd to vote. Um, you can also ch check out Bears-Vote um, on the Baylor Student Government website or just on the regular Baylor website for all information on early voting, um, mail-in ballots, different things like that if you're still in that process. Early voting is open from October 21st to November 1st, and the deadline to request a mail-in ballot from where you are registered is October 25th. Many freshmen have finally settled into their dorms. However, the Honors College residents are still living in a construction zone. Maya Dulock gives us the scoop. Since move-in over a month ago, residents of the Honors College have been dealing with construction in their dorms. Some students in Alexander Hall are experiencing air conditioning issues in their rooms. Our room still doesn't have functioning AC. Um, and yeah, it's been over a month since we've been here. Um, After submitting multiple work orders, some of the AC units still have not been fixed, leaving residents with window AC units that take up lots of space in their small dorms. So the, the temporary unit that we have belongs to the construction company, so when they leave, we're going to have to give it to them, like give it back to them. Um. Because of the unbearable climate in some of the dorms, students choose to spend as much time as they can outside of their rooms. But it's not just the air conditioning. Students in Memorial Residence Hall have had to walk past paint-drenched walls. Week, there's been a lot of painting, so there's like caution tape over a lot of the stairs, so we can't go up certain stair entrances or certain doors that lead to certain stairs. Um. Aside from the wet paint taking over the hallways, common areas, and staircases, some students say the worst part is the noise of jackhammers at the crack of dawn. So it was like, like I just got woken up to like this like ridiculous banging. Um, and the 
Most of the noise comes from the residence halls Allen and Dawson, which are currently under renovations, leaving messes close to where students live. And even though these loud projects are still going on, some students are hopeful it will end soon. You know, I would have thought it would be done when we moved in. <laughs> That's okay, though. Um... For Lariat TV News, I'm Maya Duloc. In October, we wear pink to support Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and here are a few reminders to help us stay informed. It is recommended to do a self-breast exam monthly to stay aware of any changes. For college women, a breast ultrasound is more effective than a mammogram, so if you feel like something's wrong, get an ultrasound. You can also get well woman exams done at the Baylor Health Services. I think most of us have a tendency to just say, it's probably nothing and I don't really want to look into it, but we have to fight that and instead go have it checked out, see if there's anything concerning about it. Crickets are no stranger to Baylor students and these noisy bugs have taken over campus and student housing. LTVN's Marissa Moniz spoke to students and exterminators to get more details. The cricket infestation around Baylor is no secret. Students on and off campus have found them in their shoes, drains, and even in their beds. I go in my bathroom, freaking cricket in the shower drain. He's coming up out of the shower drain. And then we got some stuck behind our refrigerator. I was walking down Penland Alley and uh, a cricket flew in my mouth and I had to spit it out before I swallowed it. <laughs> even the smell of these crickets can sometimes linger on campus. It really gets to you, especially when you have an exam and you're just trying to live life and you just can't with a smell like that. Um, there's some that got under the elevator and they died down there and now we can't get them out so it just smells really, really bad. As the cricket problems are well known on and off campus, students are searching for solutions. Everybody knows about it. It's a Central Texas thing. So I think kind of planning for that, maybe bringing more stuff in. Maintenance crew comes over here. They blow the sidewalks all the time. Maybe they come in here, clean up the crickets. They bring extra people on to work on that. The crickets around Waco and the places students are finding them is quite concerning. I spoke with local exterminators to get students insight on how to handle this cricket apocalypse. I mean, the first thing I'd recommend is just going through and finding any cracks or crevices that they can get into, like under doors, weep holes, windows. Wallace also said using dimmer lights will attract less crickets, especially with the way they've been hatching this year. Late August, early September, that's when they really start to breed and start to come out. So now, especially with the weather change, it's perfect for them to hatch. And so they're just going rampant this year. Wallace said the crickets should be gone soon as colder weather is on the way. For Lariat TV News, I'm Marissa Muniz. Next, we hit the lake to show you one team that made nationals. And show you one group at Baylor who's gone viral. Stay tuned. Dust your boots off Waco and come to the one and only Heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo presented by HEB at the Extra Co Event Center. The fair fun begins October 3rd through 13th and this year's one hot rodeo presented by Ag Trust Farm Credit will have some of the bravest rodeo cowboys and cowgirls we've ever seen. Professional bull riding, calf roping, barrel racing, mutton bust and buckaroos and much more. Gear up for the rowdiest rodeo in town. Get your tickets at hotfair.com today. See y'all there. Lanes on Austin is a small boutique in Waco that has served the community for over 70 years. Irma Peña shows you how they continue to connect with the Baylor community. Lanes on Austin Avenue was a family-owned business for more than 70 years, but its ownership changed when Baylor grad Kimberly Nielsen bought the shop in 2022, extending its commitment to the Baylor community. We just really do our best to welcome um, families and students at Baylor and provide a safe and friendly place for them to come and enjoy themselves. What started as a lamp store in the 1950s is now a home decor and bridal registry store where some Baylor students get to sell their products. We have a lot of classes that come here, a lot of our merchandising classes. Um, we use students um, if they have a project and we allow them to come and merchandise and just kind of teach them and work hand in hand um, for students who want to make this a career. Baylor students like Sunny Ruffin say that they like working in the shop and are grateful for how they offer lenient schedules. They are so kind and compassionate when it comes to I need to have a few more hours to study this week 
and they're very flexible on the time and that's just something that I really appreciate and value because they always say that I'm a student first and a worker second. Whether you're looking to get a head start on your career or just looking for home decor, Lanes on Austin could be the place for you. For Larry TV News, I'm Irma Peña. The Baylor water ski team achieved a program milestone and Claire Goodyear hit the water to tell you all about it. For the first time in 20 years, the Baylor water ski team has made nationals. I remember Saturday night, I was sitting down talking to our treasurer. I'm like, oh my God, this is possible. Like we, like, we can do this. It was like, it was mind blowing. It was incredible. Like I was, I was so excited. During regionals, the team set personal bests by landing jumps and placing in the trick skiing section, which scored them a seat at nationals. What I love about our team, our energy has always been high. Like we're always like we're super close knit. We're always like super pumped to be where we're at. Like I remember talking to one of my skiers, and he was like, "Dude, I haven't slept in three days. Like I just can't wait. Like I'm just so excited to go." I'm like, "Yeah, me too." And the alumni support has been massive. I've heard got emails, calls from so many different alumni reaching out, supporting, like with resources or with like advice and things like that. Like there's a bunch of them who are coming out to nationals to come support us. Um, and so it's been, it's, it's been really, really cool to see. Freshman Austin Cameron has a vision for the team's future years. I hope that uh, Baylor has a seat at the table for the next three years I'm here. So that's a big goal of mine as of now. Breaking the streak and making nationals is not something the team takes lightly. I mean, I have really no words to say. Like, I couldn't be more proud of everyone. I mean, even me just coming in just now, like, I can still see, like, how much this means to everyone. I mean, it's not, it's something that's a lot bigger than one person, but it's like the entire team. I mean, it's kind of mind blowing, right? Like it's it's kind of it's kind of a god thing. Like I would never have expected uh, my freshman year that I'd be going to nationals. Like I didn't even know nationals existed my freshman year, and so uh, being where we are today has just yeah, you know, it's it's insane. The team will compete in nationals this weekend. For Lariat TV News, I'm Claire Goodyear. You may have seen some new Baylor celebrities singing their way onto your social media pages. LTVN's Lauren Holcomb talked with the men's choir about their viral hits. Most Baylor organizations do have social media platforms, but not all of them are racking up almost 8 million views from around the world. Coming in at almost 66,000 followers, today we're taking a look at Baylor Men's Choir. I wonder if they'll play theme. Um, this is Baylor University Men's Choir. <laughs> This reel from September got 4 million views in the first 24 hours and now has almost 8 million views. Now a month later, Baylor Men's Choir have become campus celebrities. People have come up to me and been like, yo, you're the guy in the, the Men's Choir reel. Or, you know, friends of mine have been like, yo, my friend from home from like in Washington was sending me this reel. This isn't their first time going viral. The choir posted a video waking up their sleeping director that struck a chord across the world. About a week after I posted it, that video made its way over to Africa. Um, and since it's a Kenyan folk song, I guess people over there really loved it. They're like, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of Americans singing a song that we know in our language. The members call it a fraternity without the title. They focus on the fun and the numbers come naturally. You know, I think that's just in general a reflection of what we do. We, you know, we have a lot of fun in the choir, we do some cool things, and I'm just trying to show everyone that we do that. And the singers aren't planning on slowing down anytime soon. Our goal is to become one of the top three Baylor accounts, like in terms of followers, follower count. You can find them on Instagram at BU Men's Choir or on Facebook at Baylor Men's Choir. For Lariat TV News, I'm Lauren Holcomb. Fashion is all around us, and three apparel merchandising students are showing us specifically what Baylor fashion looks like. Dr. Martinez's digital retailing class requires students to take over the Baylor Fashion Instagram page for 12 days. This takeover is to teach her students the business side of fashion and how to study analytics. Three apparel majors, Mallory Hamilton, Brinkley Bounds, and Karima Avina, kicked off their takeover in a creative way by interviewing students on their way to class about their outfits. We're going to focus on like our personal fashion tastes or like interviewing others and like the student body on like their outlook on fashion. And so I'd say that that's helping the student body just get connected with Baylor fashion. Check out their Instagram page at Baylor Fashion to follow along with the takeover lasting until October 18th. 
In sports, men's tennis leads the way at the Big 12 SEC Challenge. And although it's a bye week, we'll highlight an X factor in the Bears' backfield. Keep it here. I'll never get used to this. I'll never get used to this. This is how I want to live. Forever we'll be singing like. This football season has seen a few unheralded names take on key roles for the team. One such player is running back Bryson Washington. I bring this Lariat exclusive story. When Bryson Washington committed to Baylor as a three-star running back, he joined an already crowded running back room. He only saw action in three games this freshman season, opting the red shirt and maintained eligibility. I just had to keep my head down and working. Like I used to have talks with my mom. It was, a, I, uh, it was times where like I feel like football wasn't, you know, meant for me at the time, but like my family, they uh, reminded me constantly like, yeah, you love it, you love football, don't let anyone take it away from you. Bryson spent part of this last offseason injured and missed the season opener against Tarleton, but he burst in the scene on week three against Air Force, rushing for over 100 yards and scoring his first touchdown of his collegiate career. The moment that I have been waiting on for him and that's what I was celebrating. But hearing his name being called particular in that game, it was a bonus on it. It was a bonus to me because I was just celebrating for him because I knew that's exactly what he needed to move himself. As he was crossing the goal line, Bryson thought of his late father who passed away when he was a young child. Oh, it was amazing. It was just like, um, like it felt like a weight off my shoulders kind of like, um, before every game, I go out to the back part line and talk to my pops, and I talk to Jesus. Um, and the conversation we have is just like, um, like be the best version of me. Um, Bryson grew up going to church, and the freedom to practice his faith at school was the reason why he chose to come to Baylor in the first place. I really never had the, like, um, how do I say it, like, me being an athlete and a Christian, like, putting it together. But, like, uh, when I came up here on my visit to Baylor, like, I felt like, like it was a good thing for me. Like, I really needed it. Like, Branson and the Bears have this week off, but next week they play Texas Tech in Lubbock. For Larry TV News, I'm Braden Murray. We have reached the halfway point of the Baylor football season. The Bears are 2-4 and four and sit in 15th place in the Big 12. Of the Bears' four losses, three of them were within two possessions, while two of the losses, BYU and Colorado, came down to the last drives. Soy Robinson has signed as a starting quarterback for the Bears after stepping in the role in week three. On the defensive side of the ball, the Bears have been anchored by veteran players like Jackie Marshall and Matt Jones. Coming out of Juco, I wanted to go to a place where I could call home and, and I could feel the love and we could all come in and, and work no matter what the situation was. And we did that all spring, uh, we did that all summer, and it doesn't change now in the season. Everybody goes through hardships, everybody goes through the rain, but you're going to experience a sunny day soon, so we got to push through that sunny day. A strong outing from Baylor men's tennis guided the Big 12 to win over the SEC in the annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Aiden Pham has the story. Baylor men's tennis teamed up with fellow Big 12 opponents to take on the SEC in the annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Four athletes represented Baylor at the tournament. Sophomore Louis Bowden, juniors Quentin Van Wyck and John Borvelt, and senior Oscar Brosham paulson We're doing a good job. Um, you know, this is a great event to, to be able to compete against different schools from, from another one of the premier conferences in the country is, is great. On day one, the Bears swept all four matches against Texas A&M in singles and were two for two in doubles against their Auburn opponents. Being here at home, we really wanted to represent Big 12 uh, well, and I think everyone went out and really competed hard. I think you could see on the results too that, especially the Baylor guys, we did really well. On Saturday, Baylor was three for four in singles play against Alabama. In doubles, juniors Jean Borvelt and senior Oscar Brosham paulson picked up their second win of the weekend. The Bears would finish the weekend going five and one in doubles. Matt Oscar, I think he's, you know, I think a lot of people would say he's he's really improved his his game from the back, but 
uh, I will tell you, I think he's volleying better than I've ever seen. Uh, very comfortable moving forward. I think that's, you know, really helping him out. Junior Quentin Van Wick defeated his Texas opponent on Sunday to go undefeated in singles. And Junior Jambor Veltz was named Big 12 MVP after going 5-1 over the weekend and guiding the Big 12 to a 48-42 victory over the SEC. Jambor is, is doing a good job um, as a competitor. Uh, I think sometimes he likes to battle against himself and, and what his level could be. Um, and now he's, he's doing a better job of just taking it day by day and, and point by point um, and, and really giving him a, a good opportunity to compete in, in the big moments. Baylor will now set their eyes on the ITF Pro Circuit M25 Louisville, which runs from October 7th through 13th. For Lariat TV News, I'm Aiden Pham. Volleyball is on the road searching for a pair of wins after an upset loss on Sunday. The then number 14 ranked Bearsville didn't rank number 22 TCU in four sets. TCU takes set one, Baylor comes in second, but the Horned Frogs must set enough momentum to finish the jobs in sets three and four. Bears are facing two conference opponents, BYU on Thursday and Utah on Saturday. Thursday is a top 25 showdown between the Cougars and the Bears. Both teams are going to pick up a win after tough losses. As the Big 12 is getting more competitive, head coach Ryan McGuire knows that each game is crucial. I think that's why this next week's important for us. Like the home team seem, you know, seem to be winning uh, a lot of the matches from, from what we've seen or are playing some competitive matches right there. That's going to do it for sports this week, but we'll be back next week to preview football's bout with Texas Tech. Back to you, ladies. Thanks, Brayden. That wraps up this week's newscast. For more Lariat content, follow us on YouTube and Instagram at Baylor Lariat. Thank you for watching, and look for the Lariat's weekly print edition on Stan's Thursday morning. We'll be back October 18th. Until then, have a great fall break and sick'em bears. <laughs>